Since the dawn of our civilization, the man always worked and strived for better, wanting in his life money, wealth, love, pleasures and by that power, more power. Kingdoms and empires wanted to expand their lands, gaining power and more power. In order to achieve that state, the man always worked and gives sacrifices eventually all his life, spending all his priceless time, and for what? To gain maybe a slice of that holy power. See now, the ancient times are over. We are in the 19th century, and a new magical gate is open among countless others to achieve power. One specifically gate is the new thought movement that says true human selfhood is divine. So around early 1920s, plenty of gurus, philosophers and psychologists adopted the ideology, studied it and dreamed of teaching the principles to a larger public. And one of them was Geneva Berendt. Geneva Berendt was a French author and a teacher of mental science, whom studied the new thought movement as a philosophy, a practical one, and expanded the thought through which you can unlock your inner invisible power and reveal it to the world. Later ended up with an answer to an ambiguous question. The first argument made by Behrendt is that visualization actually gives our minds structure. Our vivid imaginations enable us to express the flawless order that the cosmos and the mind are merging together to create one whole system. She points out that only because someone initially thought that such things should exist that we have cell phones and aircraft today, all significant achievements represent a victory of principles over the realities of the time. When we consider that everything begins in the mind and is already somewhat real at the time of conception, the concept of reality becomes clear and bright. These early aircraft were only the present expression of a flawless idea, of a flight already developed when the Wright brothers were designing and testing their flying vehicles. It is believed that after each failure, one of the brothers would say to the other, I can envision myself riding in that machine, and it travels easily and steadily, saying, it's okay, brother. With such competing visuals always in front of them, their ability to build the first functional airplane seemed inevitable. As Behrendt puts it, in visualizing or making a mental picture, you are not endeavoring to change the laws of nature, you are fulfilling them. A strong mental image surmounts the mysterious but unfailing law of attraction, which allows things to manifest according to what has been imagined. Everyone visualizes, Baron writes, whether they are aware of it or not. Before they are realized in physical reality, all of us first imagine our futures. The excellent possibility to select those photographs is made possible as a result. Everything in the world, from the hat on your head to the boots on your feet, has its origin in mind and comes into life in precisely the same way. This process is neither bizarre nor strange. All are cemented projections of thoughts. The natural process by which everything is produced is through the laws of vision, attraction and manifestation. She gives the railroad tycoon James G. Hill as an example, who imagined the line connecting the east and west coasts of America years before the first track was actually constructed, and the wealthy Australian rancher James Tyson, who made the Australian deserts bloom like the rose. She writes that he just kept his brain fixed around the idea of creating fences and seeing flowers and grace where none existed at that time, even while working as a bushman for a few shillings per day. To accomplish an objective, we all took similar actions to Hill and Tyson. When we visualize what we want, we are motivated to take action. In order to summarize what she is saying, Behrendt quotes a really lovely passage from the Bible, from the Apostle Paul. The words were formed by the word of God, 
things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. Biren goes to great effort to explain the theology behind the law of attraction. As the preceding phrase implies, there is a creative power, universal mind, or God who creates the cosmos and would like to see the idea materialized in physical form for the sake of completion. Humans are smaller versions of the creative power, capable of turning thoughts into reality and physically creating their own universes in the same manner that God has complete control over the universe. Human beings exist to differentiate the universal mind, which manifests itself in an infinite diversity of personalities. As a result, by imagining and then manifesting something, we are fulfilling God's desire for us to be unique and powerful. We express ourselves by producing something from nothing. Some people, according to Berendt, believe it is too material and not spiritual enough to visualize for things. However, the deliberate manifestation for our desires is exactly what God intended for us to do. God creates with complete ease and joy, and you should likewise. You may feel embarrassed to ask for what you desire, but remember Behrens theory that you are only a tiny part of the universal mind or God in these moments. It is in your nature to continuously crave and create new things. As a result, she writes, do not fear to be your true self, for everything you want, wants you.